Hello, welcome to Info Hub. In our headlines, Minister Harmon about how the national airways were siphoned off to a selected few. The broadcast amendment bill poses as no imposition on broadcasters. NSC offers full scholarships to athletes and $197 million approved for works on industrial estate in Lethem. Thanks for staying with us. Explosive revelations were made by Minister of State Joseph Harmon in the National Assembly about how the National Airways were siphoned off to a selected few, friends and family members and associates of the former administration. There was an ulterior motive described as sinister which prompted the previous government to issue broadcasting licenses for some of the television and radio stations owned, said Minister Harmon, as he made his contribution to the debate on the broadcast amendment bill in the House today. We need to know what are the facts. And these are yes, tell them. For the audio radio broadcasting license in Guyana, Escobar Coast and Islands Region 2. Hello. Hello. These are the names of the licensees. Freedom Radio Inc. Hello. Radio Inc. Pinnacle Communication Inc. Who? Radio Guyana Inc. Georgetown Region 3 and 4. A and G Inc. Second one, Freedom Radio Inc. Again, it's St. Jams Entertainment Inc. I Radio Inc. National Communication Inc. Radio Guyana Inc. Wireless Communication Inc. So there again, Freedom Radio Inc, Radio Guyana Inc, I Radio Inc, Region 3 or 4. Come now to New Amsterdam, Region 5 and 6. Region 5 and 6, Freedom Radio Inc, I Radio Inc, Little Rock Station Inc, Radio Guyana Inc. Quarantine. Region number six. Freedom Radio Inc. I Radio Inc. Radio Guyana Inc. What is this? Mr. Chairman, a summary of over the air TV broadcast in Guyana. Region number three and four, Georgetown. Blackman and Sons Inc. Channel nine. CNS Inc. Channel six. E Networks Inc. Channel 36, 37, 43, 44, 45, 47, 48, 49. One e network thing. New Amsterdam. All Broadcasting Corporation, ABC Inc. Dave Tele Television, Channel 8 Inc. e Networks Inc. 43, 44, 45, 48. 49, one e-network thing, all of this. The minister likened the move as one akin to kidnapping a captive audience. So Mr. Chairman, what we, are, we see here ah. is that all across Guyana, yeah. Yeah. Radio yeah. Guyana Inc., Oppression. I Radio Inc., Radio Ga Freedom Radio Inc. Monopoly. This is the monopoly talking about. This is the monopoly we're talking about, Mr. Chairman. The point is that, Mr. Chairman, that the channels that were allocated to these radio stations, they did not pay a cent for it. At the time of the at the time of their application, but at the time of the application, when they were given a scarce national resource, they didn't pay anything for it. He emphasized his support for the bill, noting that the wrong must be corrected since the people of Guyana expected government to act. The broadcast amendment bill is in no way an impediment on the media or an imposition on broadcasters, Prime Minister Moses Nagamutu assured. Tiffany Rodius on this report. Prime Minister Moses Nagamutu said the amendments to the broadcast bill of 2011 are necessary to lend a clarity to the law and free up broadcasters. This bill provides to amend the 2011 Act to one, introduce the three classes of broadcast services, namely commercial, 
non-commercial and community classes and three types of broadcasting zones, namely primary, secondary, and tertiary broadcasting zones. The bill provides for public service programs, as I explained. The prohibition of program contents that carry hate speech appeal to racial sentiments and incitement or threat, terrorist threat. More importantly, these amendments seek to define what public service broadcast is and put a limit to its airtime. It was stated that there should be public service broadcast, but there was no definition of it. And so in this amended uh, amendment, we pl place a definition of public service broadcast to mean the broadcast of a program produced for the purpose of informing and educating the public and promoting policies and activities of the government that benefit the public as a whole. A differentiation should be made between party propaganda and government information. This government is committed to respecting the taxpayers' wishes that they be informed what is being done with their monies. Prime Minister Moses Nagamutu dismissed the mischief being peddled that the bill will be the death of the freedom of the press. The amendments he added will bring clarity to what he dubbed the Jagdio Act, which was passed in 2011. Prime Minister Nagamutu added that the amendment also frees up broadcasters with the introduction of zones. The restructuring of the fee schedule has been done to correct a mischief, a mischief that emanated under the previous administration when a former government minister became the chairperson of the Guyana National Broadcasting Authority. And very whimsically and arbitrarily increased the licensing fee for television by 1,000%. In fact, the new fees are a reduction from those outlined in the 2011 Act. This new fee structure is an incentive to broadcasters to utilize the tertiary zones and reduce squatting on frequencies. For InfoHub, Tiffany Rogers. Guyana's economy has recorded real GDP growth of 2.2% during the first half of 2017. This was revealed by Minister of State Joseph Harmon at the post-cabinet media briefing at the Ministry of the Presidency today. According to Minister Harmon, the report also revealed that during the first six months, the country's fiscal balance increased compared to the same corresponding period in 2016. As of June 2016, the GDP growth was 2.0. As of June 2017, it was 2.2. The fiscal balance as of June 2016 was 8. 2.7 and in June 2017 it was 3.215.4. The media report also revealed that the private sector's credit has increased while the exchange rate has remained constant. The exchange rate, that is the US dollar exchange rate was at June 2016 206.5 and at June 2017, 206.5. The private sector credit was listed at 213, 135.2 in June 2016, and in June 2017, 216, 906.8. The small savings rate as a percentage in 2016, June 2016 was 1.26% and in June 2017, 1.18%. So those are the selected indicators. As I said, um, the Minister of Finance will be able to uh, elaborate much more on, on those selected figures that are given to you. The figures for the first mid-year report was presented by Minister of Finance Winston Jordan on Wednesday to Cabinet. Cabinet approved the report and directed that it be laid in the National Assembly as is required by law. 
The media report provided information by way of selected indicators such as GDP growth, the fiscal balance, the exchange rate, and private sector credit. It also provided information on the performance of key sectors of the economy and revised economic outlook for the second half of the year. Sinika Thorne for InfoHub. The president of the Guyana Bar Association recently lauded the administration for transformative works in the judicial system. Kamal Ramkaran said he looks forward to a stronger and more effective legal system at the opening of a new wing at the High Court. He said the wing will play a significant role. The opening of this new wing is only the latest in a series of developments which transform the face of legal practice in Guyana. These developments show a clear commitment by the government and the judiciary for significant improvement in access to and delivery of justice. He explained some of the ways in which the judicial system has been revamped. Two new buildings housing more courts have been built. A new court, a new court division dedicated only to family matters, with special rules and knowledgeable and experienced judges in that area has been created. At least ten young and energetic judges, including two in the land court, have been appointed to the head court. Two vibrant and capable and experienced judges have been appointed to act as Chancellor and Chief Justice. He also noted that a transcription system has been implemented partially in some courts. The Bar Association president also said that other initiatives were taken. A special constitutional and administrative law division headed by the Chief Justice has been created. The entire system of civil justice has been completely revamped with the implementation of the civil procedure rules in February this year, which replaced rules that were in place for almost 62 years before that. The new wing will house the land court. Works on the Lethem Industrial Estate are ahead of schedule. As such, an additional $197 million was approved by the House last evening for further works to commence. Gabriella Patram tells us more in this report. The additional money will provide resources for accelerated infrastructural works in Lots 1 and 2 of the Lethem Industrial Estate. Works include roads, drains, structures, water distribution network, retention ponds, and the supply of materials. Minister Gaskin told the House the total spent so far on Lots 1 and 2 of the industrial estate. The amount spent on Lot 1 so far is $113,965,328, and on Lot 2, $81,528,000. $805. Minister Gaskin, in responding to questions from the opposition relating to the investment into the Lethem Industrial Estate, said, This is a long-term investment designed to bring investments into the area, create jobs in the area, create jobs in the value-added sector, um, bring export earnings into our economy. Um, also, when the estate is uh, finally completed, it will also house a, a business incubator, which will also be of benefit to small businesses in the area. So yes, I think it will be beneficial. It's a huge investment. Minister Gaskin pointed out to the House that the estate is one that was inherited from the previous administration, on which they have made improvements to the model and have not aborted the investment. The estate was scheduled to be completed in 2016, but had to be reviewed because works appear to have been done haphazardly under the previous administration. And the estate did not cater for small businesses. There were other major Major weaknesses identified. The Ministry of Business has responsibility for industrial estates in Lethem, Belvedere, Eccles, and Collagen. Gabriella Patram for InfoHub. Efforts to improve electricity distribution across Guyana are moving apace as GPL is now closer to constructing its new substations. Renetta Lafleur has more. GPL is continuing work to reduce blackouts. During 2016, GPL has injected some $3 billion for the construction of four new substations across Guyana. Acting Chief Executive Officer at GPL, Renford Homer, said the power company has already identified the lands for the construction work. We've identified land at uh, Hydroni, um, which is, of course, East Bank is superior. There is Wales on the West Bank of Demerara. There is Kurukuru. Uh, of course, uh, on the East Bank. 
and of course there is um, Williamsburg. Homer explained that those areas were chosen utilizing information from studies carried out by consultants to ensure that the investment is made in the right areas. There was a study that was conducted by a, a German firm. There was also a study that was conducted at the time when the country um, had geared significant momentum going towards um, the um, commissioning of our, hydro, our first major um, hydropower um, project. Um, and that pretty much set out to GPL um, the improvements that it would want to consider. GPL currently has approximately 187,000 customers and foresees a 3% growth. Therefore, the power company is working to improve the quality of service offered, Homer stated. Renetta LaFleur, InfoHub. In keeping with the government's mandate to support their local athletes, the NSC offered full scholarships to several athletes. Tiffany Rodias joins us. Twelve athletes were given full scholarships to the University of Guyana, while two of the athletes were scouted and offered full scholarships by Monroe College of the United States. They are slated to depart on August 18. The National Sports Commission will make available to these two athletes, namely um, Onasha Rogers and Claudice, Claudice McCoy, the same sum that would have been used for them to attend the University of Guyana. And of course, this payment is on a yearly basis to the total amount of $230,000 per year for four years. Um, it's noteworthy to mention that this amount includes the $50,000 miscellaneous fee that students at the University of Ghana would, be, would have to pay as well. Director of Sport Christopher Jones explained that though the athletes have accepted the college's offer, they will still receive their payment per their agreement. As stipulated in the agreement, however, if for some reason they fail to complete um, their studies at Monroe College, the payments will cease. If thereafter they pursue studies at the University of Ghana, the balance will continue. One of the athletes slated to depart, Onasha Rogers, expressed her gratitude for the support. First of all, I'd like to say thank you to the National Sports Commission and this Christopher Jones for this contribution made and I'm very excited and happy to have this opportunity to go for my studies and I promise to go and do my best and make Guyana proud. The Director of Sport noted that the agreement signed is the government's way of honoring their commitment towards providing platforms for local athletes. For InfoHub, Tiffany Rogers. Thanks for watching. Connect with us 24-7 on our website and social media. Goodbye.